reason, uh, the I reason thought why... you guys were getting even with me for missing a call once. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were. I, I was actually. Um, me and Dana were. I was, I'm looking for a, a car, a new car. Yeah. So Dana went to like different uh, dealerships today, searching for a car that was affordable. So. That would be about 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. It's like, it's like a whole psychological like mind game with these people, you know. You got to yeah. They try to get all this money out of you that you don't have. Basically barring against yourself. Um, the, the reason why I called... Uh, you know Kim Little. I don't know if you spoke to him, but he was he was yeah. uh, looking for you. He was like worried. He yeah, I spoke I spoke to him this morning. Uh, something uh, occurred, and it was because of Bell Canada. They uh, they changed his uh, phone number. Uh, as it appears on my phone, to hmm. unknown. Oh, okay. And I said, unknown, that doesn't make any sense at all. Who would that be? And I'm not allowed, basically, in my deal with the cell to answer any phone call I don't know. So they took them yesterday, and it wasn't until late last night that we had a conversation. I said, you know, that somebody calling back and like that, it's got to be Kim. So this morning I tried calling him, and uh, the phone rang at his end uh, that I could hear, but he didn't answer. And uh, then later on in the morning, he called on a different phone. And uh, he said he hadn't heard any phone calls coming in. So they've uh, they've uh, disabled his uh, cheapest phone and put him on to his most expensive phone. So... Yeah, another on, another ploy. Yeah, when I was on the phone with him, the phone kept like dropping the phone calls. It was just disconnect all the time. Yeah, you know, well, that's what they were doing, yeah. trying to stop communications. Bell Canada uh, is is basically uh, the number one place that will be. Um, uh, the center of attention, if you will, in the pineal court. The, 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 apparently, they're like one of the biggest, or probably the biggest spy in the world. They listen to every conversation. Well, uh, it, it is the belief of the cell that there is only one telephone company in the world, and the others all have different names for the purpose of disguise. But in fact, Dell is the company that oversees all the other phone companies, so they can automatically find out what you're saying if they're tracking you wherever and whoever calls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, what was the bell uh, symbolized again, that whole bell? Um, Pregnant woman? Isn't it like, because I know in, when you go into like Philadelphia, is it Philadelphia where they have the crack bell that was supposed to symbolize yeah. the crack I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, was it a pregnant uh, female? Is that what it was? Yeah, it was like a it showed like a woman's body or something like the way the curves. Uh, yeah. 
And they also use two letters, and I think it's PT, that they use as a code when they're doing something. Yeah, well, AT&T down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah down here it's AT&T. But uh, it's not, it's not the, in, in the name. It's in, if they're doing something in communications and you read it all through, you'll come across something that's been changed PT from what it's supposed to be. And sometimes you're trying to figure out what does this word mean, but it's because they change whatever letters were there to PT. That means we were here. We did this. Bell. Are you saying PT, like Paul Thomas? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then all this stuff that's going on with, you know, because you're saying phone calls, but you know, nowadays most of people's communications are digital, right? Google searches and everything time they type in their phone and text messages and all that stuff's yeah. recorded, you know. Yeah. Every keystroke oh. recorded. <laughs> there is nothing, nothing in the world that is not capable of being copied. Doesn't matter whether it's the post office or the telephone company or emails, everything. And they have, of course, computers that can sort it all out, you know, and give them what they want on a minute to minute basis. Speaking of Google, I was going to say uh, supposedly now they're like. Un, under scrutiny now in the U.S. because uh, it was like exposed that they wanted to change, uh, manipulate the election because yeah. they didn't like the turnout from the 2016. Well, there is no doubt that Google is in on it, and it may even be uh, the Moho discontinuities. Uh, preferred communications device. It just, I mean, no. I, I knew about. Hmm? No. Yeah, I, I, I said I knew about when you when you said the go go. I knew like yeah. all those years back then that Google was not good news, and now it's yeah. coming out that what like people see the the. People are realizing like the threat that Google is. So, people yeah. Are so. A lot of these things that you you talked about, not everything, but a lot of the things we talked about, people are now realizing now, twenty, thirty years, years later. By the, by the way, now that you mentioned that, and before I forget, um, I've read a book recently that was published in 1996, five years after I took the gang in Ottawa to court, because because I took them to court in 1991, and it was about the activities that I had gathered up from 1986 to 91 was presented at the court and the evidence was confirmed by the witnesses, uh, RCMP and cabinet ministers and whatever I had subpoenaed. And uh, uh, that book, uh, I would say, is uh, at least 95% truthful on how it lays out the problem we're living today. And the part that's not truthful is basically just to hide who's writing this. 
But the book is called The Story of B. B is in the letter uh, form, like like A B C D letter B. So if if you get a chance to read that cover to cover, you will find a lot of interesting things that confirm everything I've been saying. And it was written five years after I made it public at the courthouse. Yeah. It's saying Daniel Quinn. Yeah. 1996 published December. Yeah. I'm going to read that yeah. book. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, anybody who's at our level need to understand uh, the past different from what we've been taught in school and church and TV and what have you. And this book uh, talks about the important section of time going backwards to explain today is 10,000 years. And, and that life before then uh, can go back as far as millions of years. Well, it's millions of years is, is far back and, that wouldn't be uh, uh, homo as we know it, you know. But they go into the story, basically, that I've been preaching for 30 years. And, and they come pretty close to everything confirming what, we're saying. And the only thing that um, um, I find a little objectionable is that they won't admit to anything underground and they don't admit to uh, um, the the uh, change over that 10,000 years was actually manufactured by the people underground and they used the name God a number of times rather than creation that kind of stuff but that we all know so we don't have to worry too much about so uh, it's it's uh, if anybody is doubtful of the history that led up to uh, what they call the great forgetting. That's what is used in the book. The great forgetting is that we're not told the history of mankind before the last 10,000 years. And that life style exists in every um, country like, you know, Africa and South America and uh, Far East, in, in the concept of tribes and thousands of tribes uh, still exist, but many, many thousands of tribes have disappeared because they've been incorporated into the um, one tribe, us, one tribe that changed activities in the world 10,000 years ago. The first 5,000 years from 8,000 to 3,000 B.C., very, very slowly. And then from 3000 BC to 2000 AD, an increase in speed in what they were doing. 
and the fact that we have now arrived at the end, those people are no longer the friends of the bosses that put them on the path, and uh, the end of the bureaucratic world we live in is ending. So the end of the bureaucratic world, but it seems like they're having like new bureaucrats now. Right. Well, it, it's going to be many, many fewer people than than what exists today. Seven and a half billion. They don't need seven and a half billion. They probably can do fine in what they want to do if there was a billion people. Uh, they don't come out and say it exactly, but that's what it basically is saying and and everything else they're saying is that, you know, times are changing. Uh, the uh, number of people are not required. You cannot um, uh, grow enough food uh, to feed the poor uh, because there is no need to feed the poor. What you have to do is stop growing the population, and you can't stop the population unless you cut back on food because every human being is made up out of food. And if there is no food to eat, the population cuts back. If there is food to eat, the population grows. So over the last 5,000 years, we've seen the population grow because of how they've created a controlled agriculture for the world. So at any time in the future, they could have said, okay, cut back on the food. And you can do it faster, you can do it slowly, depending on whether or not you want to use catastrophic type of endings. But all of those catastrophic probabilities are in place for around the world. So anyways, read the book, and and it will save you... uh, at least a few years of learning. Yeah, I'll look into that. Definitely a book I'll read that on my free time. Read that when I before I go to bed or something. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the food as well, like with the uh, like seeds and everything, I think they can engineer them now, right? Where they just won't reproduce. You know, like like that, like, well, like a, a limited... Everything life. that is called food has a beginning. And the beginning is in agriculture. And, and controlled raising of animals, but Animals go back to food anyway. It's the same as us. So hunter-gatherers as opposed to gatherers. The tribes basically operate on lessons learned over three million years or so. They talk about, uh, but we operate on a lie that required 5,000 years of getting you to forget it. From 3,000 to 8,000 B.C. was just devoted to make people forget what had occurred before 8,000 B.C. 
Controlling food is the key. Yeah, that was, I remember learning about when we talked about Gobeki Tepe, when you learned about how they would store all the food in one area, in a, some religious area. And all the well, people you do it behind a culture. And our culture is just, you know, started off as, as the same uh, tribal culture of any tribe. However, uh, we were picked out to be the worldwide liars about what, in fact, was going on. And what it did is it closed down a lot of tribes that could only find some uh, uh, hope in in our culture, and they joined our culture, such as you have, and the, you know I was born into it too. So it has to do basically with the gang of people that they manipulated in that 5,000-year period, 8,000 B.C. to 3,000 B.C., were basically very small in numbers, but very knowledgeable, uh, some of them, of course, in many societies, one group is more... Uh, tending to gather information. And what they knew required that they create a laboratory, inventory, Tories in England, you know, labor and, and Tories, the two divisions, laboratory. So... What what you're basically uh, living today is the end of the lie, and that's why I think they published the book. It's the 95% ending of the lie, leaving who is doing it and who continues to do it from the moho discontinuity because that you're not supposed to know no matter what society you live in. This this our like I guess the basic theme or genome that that exists today, right? It has its yeah. beginnings like in the I guess that desert region over there where Syria and all that is. Is that where yeah. the genetic... Uh, yeah, Syria to Afghanistan used to be called Persia. Now it uh, has different names like Iran and Syria and, and uh, Lebanon and, uh, you know, uh, all of... Uh, Iraq was one of the main places. Now, why, why on the world stage do they always set Iran as, like, the the big act is always, like, that tension, it seems like, as far as I've lived, like, Iran. Well, it's always. because they, Iran controls basically one of the five major religions, uh, and and that's Muslims. I mean, Muslims, since since they had the revolution there some a few years ago, I don't remember exactly when, 10, 20 years ago. Uh, so it's basically centered, and it they won't tell you this, but it's basically an agent of India. Yeah, and, yeah. of course, everybody that was sent to North America had the name Indian tied to it because they uh, came from India. 
you know. But uh, India doesn't want to be known as the country behind all these things, so they blame the Middle East. <laughs> which includes uh, all the countries there that used to be Persia. Wow, they did a lot of covering up. A lot of yeah. names and covering up. Wow. But that, you're right, like, people have to look at history differently than what they've been told. That's like a key to all of this stuff. And well, one of the examples they use in the book is the story of the frog. I don't know if you've ever heard that. In the, uh, English people in England call Frenchmen frogs. Anyways, but the point the point of the story of the frog, if you don't know it, uh, if you know it, stop me. But if you don't know it. What it is, is it starts off by saying, if you take a pot of water and you put it on a stove and you heat up the water until it's boiling and you throw a frog in it, the frog will scream and jump out as much as it can out of the water because it's being scalded. However, If you take a frog and you put it in a cold pot of water, the frog feels at home and and feels like it can stay there. And then you start turning up the heat a little bit at a time, and it's almost like the frog starts to think, well, I'm getting a nice warm bath and and yeah. kind of falls asleep while the water heats up to the point where it's boiling and the frog is dead and didn't realize it. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing they say we're living. Yeah. We were set up 5,000 years ago where nobody could notice the change. And then the pot got warmer, and all of the people over the last 5,000 years are the people who suffer the most in the world because they have to work, whereas tribal people just go around gathering and and eating and and living we're the dummies that everybody wants to join because they think just because they see things like you know big skyscrapers and everything that's of benefit to the people who work there it's not of benefit to the people who work there they're just slaves who do their own shopping the building doesn't belong to them, you know. Nothing belongs to them uh, except as long as they are needed in the task they've been assigned, they are allowed to acquire things like a car or a, a home or a country home in the summertime, you know, the privileges of the medium to wealthy people are what they are required. But it doesn't mean that they are not slaves because yeah. it's the work they do that allows them to keep going. But now they're saying even the rich are realizing that money doesn't buy happiness. Money is is for somebody else's needs. They don't need, you know, ten billion dollars in order to survive. They could do very well with thirty million or less. 
and and that their daily activity is not their choice. Most of the time, their daily activity is not fun. Even if you're not employed, what you're doing, uh, if you're a multimillionaire and not working is boring and terrible way to spend your life, I to think. Uh, very few people uh, are in a category that's not too much work, too little time, uh, too many people you have to be uh, responding to because they're paying your salary, too many banks who want to control all of your money and take uh, – the profit off the top, you know, all of that stuff. So, but read the book. Read the book. Oh, I will. Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell the world, tell the world to read the book. I'll tell them. I'll tell them. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you. Um, I noticed in the video that uh, Black uh, recorded that. Your hair was really short. And hey, what's yeah. going on, man? You're scaring me, well, man. What happened, me. what happened was the cell needed some um, in, investigators that had short hair. And they had to see how they could modify their communications network and had nobody to choose but me. So they asked me if I would, in fact, cut my hair based on adjustments they were making to their communications network and let them know if at one time or other uh, the Catmobile communications disappeared. And that's basically what I did. I cut it a little bit, and a year later, a little bit more, and a little bit more. And and still, I was in communications with the cats because they were adjusting their equipment, whatever that is. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's equipment. It's probably something that comes from their fifth dimension or something. In any event, that's what happened. And what they were saying is, we're getting ready to uh, start the work on the farm, and we want you know certain things to happen, and you're going to have to come in contact with bankers, so it won't hurt that your hair is not as long when you're dealing with that gang. <laughs> so that's the basic structure of what happened. The other the other thing that it seems like uh, Zach was interested in uh, is the tuning. And and I've told told people before that my one of the members of the cell was my is my uncle who was my uncle Bernard, who was the foreman at the mint, and he was responsible for making all the coins for Canada. And he used to tell me, "We're the only ones that make Canadian money. All paper money is all made by banks." But the government of Canada is the only one that makes money by making coins. And the top coin at about the time he was about to retire was to be the Toonie, a $2 coin. So that's why um, I tried to explain it, but obviously not clearly enough to Zach that uh, when I was on Parliament Hill, 
a member of the media one day came to me and said, I hear you give seminars. And I said, yes. And he said, how much do you charge? I said, nothing. And he said, you know, the one person who knows most the value of what he has to say is the person saying it. So if you don't charge anything, the impression is it's worth nothing. But I said, I don't want to charge anything. Uh, People can give donations if they want, but if I'm going to be charging, I want to be charging with something made by the government of Canada, not by the banks of Canada. And the only thing available is one cent to two dollars, and the two dollars is the toonie. The one dollar is called the loony. So you're crazy if you have one, but you're not crazy if you have two. So that's something I didn't get across the fact properly. I don't know if you understand it or not. I understand. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Now, as soon as they brought out the Tooney, they moved the factory, the, the place that made coins, off of Sussex Street in Ottawa behind Parliament Building next to the Art Center there. They moved it to Winnipeg. For political reasons, somebody was from Winnipeg who needed some government activity in Winnipeg, and that's what they did. They moved the making of coins, and it was right after that that my uncle retired. And he said to me, uh, I don't know, years are difficult for me to know exactly, but Sometime in the past, he told me that the project here will begin when one day somebody comes with a uh, box full of tunies. So um, that's why I put out the bins. so that they wouldn't be the first one to bring two knees. Anybody who now asks me whether or not I charge, I, I say, well, if you want to use my time, right, throw a two knee in the tub. And if you don't yeah, have a two knee, I'll put another tub where you can throw your loose change. Is it the same in every country as far as coins and, and banknotes? As far as I know. I don't know uh, what's your biggest, what's your biggest uh, uh, coin. I'm not talking about we have gold. A Susan, uh, I, I think we have a Susan B. Anthony. That's a dollar coin. And yeah. rare, rare. Do we have a $2 coin, Dana? I'm not sure. I think they used to make it, but I think... No, we have, uh, we have a $2 bill, who you're thinking of. We used to have a $2 oh, yeah, bill. Yeah. Now it's, you know, the highest one is just a dollar coin. We still have yeah. So yeah, we have the one, dollars. Right? Ours became $2, and you know that in the code, number two is number one. Yeah. yeah USA is number take one, it, right? Take okay. it for what it means. It's a code to tell you that Canada is more important than most people think in the context of being the agent of the crooks. Yeah. And they're always telling everybody, well, the U.S. is the most powerful, the best. They say we have the best uh, democracy or whatever, the best military. They, they say all these, I'm always hearing these things. Uh, yeah, and the media keeps repeating that all Canadians have to say is sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, 
souls, they're always apologetic. And the opposite is true. Behind the scenes, they're giving orders to people all over the world. But it's not to be discussed publicly. They are an agent of British Empire loyalists. And if you'll notice the letters D-E-L, and there is no L, so that means it's short one, Bell Canada. Yeah, I was thinking that. Bell. Huh. It's all a scam. It's always been a scam for 10,000 years. And... Uh, it just got worse as more and more tribes joined us, quote unquote. And, and uh, instead of having the pleasurable life they've had, they got suckered into work because the food ended up being controlled. Food is very controlled, not true. People are like, oh, I, why am I working for food? That's why you're working for food. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody, every human being, every animal on the planet is basically built on food. And if somebody controls the food, you'll see what happens. If they increase the food, the population increases. If they decrease the food, the population decreases because it always basically ends up as to how much food is available. Oh, Oh, yes. They say that... uh, you, it's not the people that are hungry that create the solution any more than it is a person who jumps out of an airplane or falls out of an airplane doesn't spend the time going down building a parachute. <laughs> The people that are hungry are not able to do much. And they're on a uh, a watch list for disappearing. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Because when you look at, like, as far as, like, on the media, they show, like, oh, look at Africa. This is apparently where everything came from, and it has it's so rich in, in, you know, natural resources, yet they're all starving. A lot of them are starving, apparently, because they don't control the food, even though they have all this, the wealthy countries for resources. Yeah. What, what do you make of all, like, the stuff now in, in America that's a, a big debate is they're talking about, uh, we, would, we, talk, we discussed that you talked about the wall, and that could have been, in, I think, might have been in relation to the wall at Lake Superior. You, is, that what, is, is, is that, like, what is, like, the symbolism behind that, this, this wall? It's basically a word that hides other words and other activities and events such as what is going on on Wall Street. Don't forget that it's a word that has been used uh, 2,000 years ago. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho and the walls came a tumbling down. 
Well, how does a wall come tumbling down 2,000 years ago? It has to be someone from underneath is coming up and causing walls to collapse so the military on the outside can just walk in. That's basically why the word wall is so important to any discussion going on. The walls are coming down and the uh, 10,000 years is finished and therefore the people hiding behind Wall Street have to come down. In other places, the walls are going up to keep the people who are hungry from coming to the place that still has food. Like a, like a survival type of thing, I guess. Like yeah. There is going to be, in my view, very few people needed north of uh, the middle of the planet (laughs) around the world except to launch missiles and 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 people into space. So what is the, maybe that's what all that missile talk is about. When you, when you hear, oh, well, China or Korea launch missiles. We're always hearing about other countries launching missiles. Is that like practice for launching people out? Yeah, out of it's, it's, it's to change people's perspective away from, you know, building chairs and houses and and telephones. It's to keep the mind on space. space and, and, and since many people cannot do it, they have to be replaced. The majority of people who are going to work because they want food, which is the majority of people in the world, uh, don't have time to think about anything else uh, than getting food. So you got to do certain things to get their mind off of themselves. And what you do is anything that has to do with War, pestilence, famine, or disease. As long as you're using that as your structure, um, you keep everybody off guard and you want them to start focusing by looking up instead of looking down. You know, lately, um, when you think, think about the Neanderthals, they, you reminded me, the Neanderthals, they always wanted people to think that they were, like, from outer space, aliens or something. But now it's starting, yeah. to, it's starting to be more in public public thought that the, the, the concept of these... Uh, I mean, you heard the president even talking about it. They were talking about, like, uh, uh, UFOs. And then on the on the internet, it was a lot of um, Area 51 and, and aliens. And I, in my yeah. in my mind, my, my thinking was was that in the Anatols, are they preparing to like for like 2020 to let people know that they exist, that these uh, that 
Neanderthals all exist partly in our genetics. Yeah. So do Denisovans. And now they're discovering a number of different groups of people that have transmitted genes. Now, was that done simply by um, procreation or was it done by genetic engineering? Well, if you don't believe that genetic engineers existed until this century, well, of course, you won't believe that it's been going on for 10,000 years. But it has. And the purpose was basically what it has achieved. And now that it's achieved it, this purpose changes the same way as the big eight Owen Bible uh, shows uh, Noah as arriving at a point where there is a flood and the people that are being born drop off dramatically uh, and then have to rebuild from there to get back to the journey they were on before. But what does that really mean? It means that the people with certain genetics were not going to be able to do the job that the genetic engineers wanted done, so they had to kill millions of people and start over with a different recipe to put them on the track they wanted, which is a track that led to Abraham, and then reverse the process coming in the other direction. That's why you have this top part of the chart is like a big zero with with somebody having hit it where Noah is, and uh, the bottom part being innate, which means refining the big O into two smaller O's, um, leading down to Mary, which Mary is basically coming out of the word mar, M-A-R in in Latin, and the Y is two in one, so a return of male-female to a single hermaphrodite is the word Mary. Coming out of the sea is basically a, uh, um, a reminder that control is under the oceans and down under the oceans is the moho discontinuity if you look at a a slice of the planet earth you'll find below the plates of the earth there's a red line that's the moho discontinuity and and that underground uh, establishment basically is is where the control comes from. Now, if you take and want to give a a hint as to who's coming out of there, you have to look at uh, the word in medicine for uh, doing operations on human beings uh, what's the word? Um, the uh, I always forget that word. And the word for I can operation. Look at it. Hey, the word for operation. Say it again. What, what the word mean? for a doctor that does operation? Surgeon. 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 Yeah. 
So what comes out of the ocean is called a spurgeon. And it comes out of the ocean and goes up uh, freshwater rivers like the St. Lawrence and the Ottawa River and then comes on land uh, as, as a representative taking over well, the representative that takes over is called a surgeon instead of a sturgeon. And a surgeon is one given the permission to kill people if they are, in fact, causing a problem uh, and the person goes to the hospital. They may have nothing really wrong with them, but they die. And and that's my uncle Wilfred, uh, who was a foreman at the post office, went to the hospital with a broken arm and died. And he's now part of the cell. My uncle Bernard was making all the coins in Canada. And when they moved it to Winnipeg, he retired and died. He's part of the cell. Tim Tim Little was actually telling me a similar story, like a guy he knew that was a, um, I think he was an officer or something. And when he yeah. retired, when the when the guy retired, he had cancer. Yeah. <laughs> and he was basically saying, like, yeah, they don't want to, they don't want you to co- make that, collect that money when you get older, so they just, you know, kill you off or whatever. Yeah, it's it's what one American called useless eaters. Oh, uh, Rockefeller? No, no, not Rockefeller. Bertrand Russell. Actually, what no, the, the German German guy that was, I think, at the time of Nixon. Oh, um, I'm, I'm thinking yeah, Bertrand Russell or, or, or Bertrand Russell or Rockefeller. No, no, he's thinking of uh, uh, the war. Um, he's the one that said military managers dumb, stupid animals. Oh, Harry Kissinger. Kissinger. Harry Kissinger. Yeah. Kissinger. Kissinger. That's it. Yeah. Kissinger. Kiss the boy. Henry right? Kissinger. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Did, were you? Uh, was it your idea to, to put that post up the other day? When? I don't remember. The Jenny. It was a post. post. Yeah, Jenny. Uh, it's a post called uh, "Conspiracy to Commit Murder." And it's, uh, yeah, that's Jennifer. That's uh, Jennifer. Yeah, that's why I was a little worried because I heard. She put me, she, you know, I put up that post for her, and then and then Kim calls me and says he can't get in contact with you. I'm like, what? what is, yeah. is this like some, made me well, you know what they did. They, they This month and last month, they cut off a third of my pension. Wow. No, no uh, uh, paperwork, no nothing. They didn't send me notices or anything. They just took it away. And I went to the bank, and the bank manager says, well, we can only tell you about what you got. We can't tell you anything about what they've taken away. But they obviously have taken away because in May, this is what you had been getting for years. And in June, all of a sudden, $842 or something like that disappeared. And in July, uh, similar amount, a few pennies different, disappears on what they send us at the bank. So, so you can't, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, I guess, Process. There's no recourse when the crooks are the people who are supposed to be doing it. Who do you go to? So Jennifer sent 
the information to the White House, to the mm-hmm. Parliament buildings, to the City Hall, uh, to uh, H&R Block, who prepared the income tax statements for the last 10 or 15 years or so. And uh, nobody cares. Nobody has come to say, you know, uh, what can I do to help? They might ask Jennifer on the net and then do nothing, but they never come here to say, show me the problem. Show me what happened to your house when Hydro pulled the plug. Show me what happened to your animals when Hydro pulled the plug. Show me how you get water when the plug was pulled. And and well, the only way I could get water was to take a taxi, go to town, buy a few bottles, and bring it back, each time costing 100 bucks. So if they don't want you to do that, they cut your pension so you don't have the money to go to town to buy water. And yet they got all of these groups that say they're there in order to help the poor. But it's not true. Because when the police asked me, they said they would take me to uh, uh, one of the charity groups. And I said, well, who are they going to give the money to? They said, well, they, they'll pay the bill. But the bill is fraudulent. Why are you paying the crooks with money intended for the poor? Why don't you ask the same group of people to come here and have a look and maybe build, dig a well, pay for a pump or something so that we have water for the animals outside? But nobody cares. And that's what it says in the book. Nobody cares. As they moved along the 5,000 years to 10,000 years, nobody cares. Everybody was complaining, but nobody was willing to do anything about it. Uh. Yeah, I heard you saying that before. And you can write laws to make it worse. Yeah. If you if you uh, go to Africa and give people more food in one location, uh, does that solve famine in that area? No. Why? Because the food is being eaten by the extra people that are born because they have food. They're not feeding the people with famine. They're feeding a bigger population. Because that's what people do when you make sure they have all the food they need is they feel better and act differently and, and, and make more children. A mess, Glenn. Yeah. It's a mess. A total mess about to end. And that's the good news about yeah. to end. <laughs> but uh, unless you know what's going on, you're not going to be part of the people that understand and can do things to try and survive. Because you'll be thinking. Somebody is going to come and assist me if a thousand feet of water comes floating down the street. Well, nobody is going to be assisting you, even if you are working in a skyscraper that's a hundred stories tall. 
How many people can be saved on a skyscraper? What's the only way to be saved if there is water up to the fourth, fifth floor? You can't go out? What do you do? You all run up to the top? What does a million people do on the top of a skyscraper except throw each other off? Can't happen. Can't be saved with what's about to happen unless you know about it ahead of time. And there's no guarantee then either, but at least there's a chance. You don't sit there waiting for somebody to come to your rescue any more than I did. What I did was, how do I survive this? Calling the city hall, calling the federal government, calling the RCMP. I sent an email to the RCMP this weekend and said, when is the RCMP going to start to investigate the attempted murder of myself? Is it only when I'm dead and they have carried my body over to a farm, a pig farm, where the pigs will eat everything, including my bones? If that's your logic, you have a problem that you didn't take into consideration. That problem is the existence of the pineal court, which when you're put on trial at the end of this existence, which is not the end, of your energy type body, when you're put on trial, the the rules they use is how you had set up your rules. So what you did to others and considered to be so, so okay, even though you are killing people left and right, that's the rule that will rule your trial. And that's what happens to you. And I ended up the letter by saying, may Jennifer have pity on your soul, knowing damn well that Jennifer ain't in the mood. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but that's um, I, I, I think about that all the time. The pioneer court, like that, for me, that's like real. Uh, just, I know the word means other things. <laughs> But that's real justice. That's real justice because it's built on truth. It's not the opinion of the person speaking because it's his pineal gland that tells what happened. Yeah. It's just the same, like, you know... It's- These people, it doesn't seem like, well, a lot of them are going to pay in this life, but. They they don't understand. And it's not that they're stupid. It's just they've been programmed. And they don't want to go outside what they believe is truth because the media told them. Well, if anybody came here that's uh, over 60 years old 
were 70 years old, they would know that Glenn Keeley in 1991 was a national figure. And when he moved in to this territory at the age just under 60, no media ever told the people that I lived here. Not that they weren't told. Many people went to the media and said, this is uh, an important figure in the history of our community that this person is living here. Why is he not being reported? Nobody is expecting, you know, that it'll be an, anybody applauding, but it's news. It's news. Why are you not reporting the news? And they well, won't the, answer. The news now, today now, is it's it's people like have like. The, as far as people believing in the news, many people just don't have any trust in the news because they've gone, they've gone so. It's just they've been caught so many times and lies. And like a lot of people just don't. I mean, still a lot of people yeah. believe, but people are just not believing it anymore. They just they see them that they're, they're completely like shameless in how they conduct themselves. Yeah. And they're losing money now. They, they're losing a lot of power in a lot of ways because now because they're losing money because people aren't watching them anymore. They're going, so now they're employees. They're using like a lower caliber of employee. They call them like, like activists who have political ideologies. And, and they put out even worse news. And that just makes yeah. it worse for them, and they just they just lose all their base. You, you know, know what what most people believe in, Jerd, is the net. Yeah. I look at the net. The last time was about four or five years ago. My story appears on the net next to stories that were manufactured to put me down by the people who caused all the problems. And a stranger looking at the net can't tell the difference between which is the true story. And they usually pick the lie because that means you don't have to do anything. That's what happens on the net. I wouldn't at all be surprised if every religious institution in the world has novices sitting in rooms across the world assigned the task of finding out who says things they don't like and then making up stories and posting them so that anyone who looks up the truth gets confused by the lies that come with it. So it's absolutely useless when looking at the net if what you're looking for is the truth because you can't make it out. The two of them are interrelated side by side by people who knew nothing about what was going on. Yeah. That's why I discontinued anything to do with the net years ago. Yeah, I mean I mean uh, I I go on the net and I you know it's just it's I don't even I mean, the you are around. The media gives you is free speech. We can't do anything about free speech. Well, you can't do anything, but you do some things. 
You omit the truth in many cases, and you allow the lies in many cases. Yeah, they allow the lies, and they'll create a rule. Oh, you can't say this word here because that will ban you. Yeah. Now, the, just, yeah. just recently, Zach, me and Zach were talking about this. They, uh, supposedly the FBI is now going to they, – they label conspiracy theory we considered like terrorism. Yeah. You can't – and on certain social sites, you can't talk about somebody's religion. You can't criticize religion because that's considered, uh, like, hate or something. <laughs> if you can't criticize so religion... It, even, even the word theory, conspiracy theory. Well, what is a theory? It's a collection of truths. It's not a person's opinion. It's a collection of truth. And yet, when they talk about it on the net, they talk of it as made up by some idiot out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, they talk they, the word theory. Yes. Yeah. They, 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 they twist it to mean to, to to mean like a like a like a guess or an uh, or an educated hypothesis. guess hypothesis exactly they that's what they yeah. they conflate it with the yeah. meaning of what a hypothesis is and I, nobody ever points that out on the media nobody ever points that out ever I yeah I'm the only one pointing it out when I speak to people like on the net or something and I point that out they're like oh yeah you have a point. Nobody yeah. on the media is pointing it out. I don't see that. No. Yeah. That's no. because they don't want to move outside what they're told they're allowed to be in mentally. School, religion, politics all do the same thing. Politics will say, we'll fix it. <laughs> And yet they they do things like there's no not enough food to feed these people, so we're going to give them more, and then next year the answer is not enough food to feed these people. Oh, we're going to give them more, and and they don't come to the conclusion ever that the more food that's available, the more babies are born. Always. doesn't matter whether you're an alligator or a mouse or a butterfly or a person. More food, more children. Means more hunger. So it's just Which the end of the cycle. Same, same hunger they had before. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that is a... <laughs> you a, don't solve a, the problem by going to the end. You solve the problem by going to the beginning. Yes. Anyways, read the book. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading that book yeah. and um Continue reading my own book of life. <laughs> yeah. It's all part of your book of life. Yeah. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. I'm going to bed. I got to get back to Jennifer. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Talk to you. Anything right. I can do, let me know. I'm not always on time, but I'm always there, I guess. <laughs> Likewise. Whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be shy. Well, I guess we'll try to find, maybe we can find a way to uh, get you some food and, and water so you don't have to spend a well, lot of money. Anything you can do to help is always appreciated, but I'm not one for asking. 
Thank you. Good night. All right. All right, guys. All right. Good night.